Hi everyone, this is Danielle Thompson with the Brown County Soil and Water Conservation District. Today we are going to be discussing one of my very favorite topics and that is fossils. Today we are going to be looking at the types of fossils that we find in southwestern Ohio. You may not realize it, but our part of Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana is truly world famous for the fossils that we have here. Not only do we have a lot of fossils, but they are very well preserved. So you are incredibly lucky to be living in a place where fossils are so easy to find and we have so many different wonderful examples of fossils in our rocks. So let's talk a little bit about the types of rock that we have and how the fossils came to be inside those rocks. The rocks that we have in this area are often limestone. Limestone is formed in a very different environment than what we have in Southwest Ohio now. Let me show you a picture of what scientists believe that our area would have looked like a very long time ago. It would have looked similar to this picture right here. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a closer look. It looks a lot different than the habitats that we have today. This habitat was an ocean habitat. So very long ago, this entire area was covered by water. So all of the animals that we find in our rocks are actually ocean animals. And that's one reason why these are so well preserved is because of the mud and the muck and the sediment that's at the bottom of that warm ocean helped preserve the animals that were living within it. So when we think about fossils, a lot of people think about the big one. We think about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are huge, um, they're small, there's lots of different types, they eat meat, they eat plants. So many cool things about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were on the earth about 65 million years ago. Well, guess what? The fossils that we are going to discuss today, the fossils that we have in our rocks in southwestern Ohio, were formed about 400 to 450 million years ago. So, Everything we talk about today was actually older than the dinosaurs. To me, that is just amazing that we have fossils right here that are older than dinosaurs. They may not be quite as big, they may not have giant teeth, but man, they are so old. And that is just one of the things that I truly love about our fossils in Ohio. So, Let's talk a little bit about how these fossils are preserved. So the fossils that we find around here are what we call mold and cast fossils. So we're going to use a little bit of Play-Doh and we're going to imagine, okay, that my hand is the bottom of the ocean. If you have ever been in a pond, a lake, anything like that, you know there's a lot of muck and mud and sediment or soil that is at the bottom of that ocean. So I have a layer of Play-Doh. We're gonna put that right there. We've got this layer of mud that is built up at the bottom of the ocean. You have animals that are living in this ocean and I just have an old snail shell here. So these animals can die and when they die, they're gonna fall into the bottom of the ocean. They're gonna kind of sit right there in that mud and muck. But over time, 
more sand, more mud, more sediment will build up on top and cover that animal. So here we have a layer of yellow Play-Doh. So over time that kind of gets squished together and there will be more layers and more layers and more layers of sand, silt, and mud that will build up on top of that. So you have these layers of sediment after a period of time, this will harden. The sands and the sediments will harden. And you might be able to guess what type of rock it's going to harden into. It's not metamorphic. It's not igneous. It's going to be a sedimentary rock. So sediment forms layers and that becomes sedimentary rock over time. It will harden into rock but inside we still have that shell. That shell will often disappear. It'll dissolve over a period of time, but it might leave a perfect impression or print in that mud that turned to rock. So we're gonna peel this open and we're gonna see what we have inside. Oh, it's wanting to stick. So, right there is the mold that we have in the rock that was formed over time. So remember, this was layers, and this mold was left in there. Now, here's the other side. So you can see the two sides of the snail. That hole or that gap is still inside this rock. In in little spaces, you might get more minerals, more mud, more sand, get into that space. And it's gonna fill up the whole space and it's going to look just like that snail. We call that fill that is inside the mold that fills it all up and makes a nice perfect copy, we call that the cast. So that's how our fossils were formed. They are formed in sedimentary rocks and they were formed in sediment at the bottom of the ocean. It's amazing how all of our fossils formed. So let's go on and let's talk about some of the different fossils that you will find in Southwestern Ohio. We're gonna cover the seven basic types of fossils there are other types that you might find, but these are the ones that we come across the most often. So we are going to start by taking a look at a picture. This picture is just a, a painting actually that I made. Um, thank you to Caesar Creek Lake for giving me the experience and the idea of how to do this program. But it is a painting of what these animals would have looked like when they were alive. Sometimes the fossils look a lot different. Sometimes they look kind of similar. So we're gonna look at what they would look like alive. And then we're gonna take a look at what the fossil looks like when it's preserved. So hopefully if you're able to get out and go fossil collecting, you'll have an idea of what it is you're looking at. So first, we have this animal right here. Now sometimes, it's hard to remember that these actually are animals. So in that picture, take a close look. We're looking at these two things right there. You have any guesses about what it might be? What type of animal has a shell like that? We can't just call it a seashell. This animal is called a brachiopod. Brachiopods are like clams or scallops. They have two shells that would open and close and they would filter water. So when we find fossils, it's often the hard parts of the animal that become molded in the rock and then cast and that's what we find. So on this brachiopod, it's going to be the shell that becomes a fossil. So this is by far the easiest fossil for you to recognize. 
it is also the most common fossil you are going to find in Brown County. They are everywhere. And there's lots of sizes and lots of shapes. So this is what a brachiopod looks like. It just looks like a stone shell. And we have some examples that I can show you. I know it won't show up perfectly on the video. So at the end, I'm gonna give you guys some pictures that are a little bit better at showing you, but look at how big. This actually came from just outside of Georgetown. This is a really, really nice brachiopod example, but you can see the ridges. All of those details are preserved in this cast. And you can see down here where the hinge was when those two shells were in place. So it's amazing. What's really neat is the variation that we have in our brachiopods. So this one's huge. You can see how big it is compared to my hand. This guy is quite a bit smaller. It's also a lot thinner. Look at how flattened that one is. It's not that it got smashed during uh, preservation. It's just it's a different type or a different species of brachiopod. So they can look very different from each other. They can be very different sizes, but it is, like I said, the most common fossil you're gonna find. So you'll definitely want to remember that one. The next fossil we have is going to look familiar. It's gonna look like something you might recognize. So we're looking at these red structures there. Remember, this is in an ocean. So a lot of times people will tell me it's coral. It's similar to coral. This is actually called a bryozoan. Bryozoans are moss animals. They lived like corals oftentimes do in that there's one little tiny animal that builds a hard case around itself and then more animals land on it and build hard cases until you have this big, beautiful branching structure that we see. So this bryozoan is, could be huge, could be very, very large and it gets buried in the mud. What do you think is gonna happen if we have something this thin that gets buried in the mud and gets more mud and more weight and more pressure on top of it. What do you think will happen? If you guessed that it's going to break, you are correct. We don't usually find huge, gorgeous pieces of bryozoan. We find small pieces, little chunks, things that have broken up over time. So this is what a bryozoan might look like. Kind of looks like a little twig, a little bone. Okay, I often hear that. And again, sometimes you find big pieces, sometimes you find small pieces. So here's a small piece, very similar to what you just saw in the picture. It looks like a little bit of a twig. This one's kind of bumpy. You can see the texture on that one. This one is a little bit larger a little bit thicker, but again, it looks a lot like coral, but it was a type of moss animal. Again, this fossil's pretty common, so you're likely to find these if you go out and start fossil collecting. Okay, our next one is a really cool one. Most people don't believe me when I say, this is an animal, I promise. Take a look at that. There are a few hints that I can give you. If you look right down here at the bottom, that's called the holdfast that keeps this animal in place. It anchors it. Does that remind you of anything? This animal is actually a relative of sea stars. So you can see the points and they have five of these tendrils on top. This is called a crinoid. Crinoids were animals, even though they have the nickname sea lily, it was an animal that filtered water. So this soft top would filter particles like plankton and algae out of the water. This 
part down here, the hold fast and what looks like a stem, was a little bit uh, harder. It actually held it up in the water so it could feed. So you can guess the part that we normally find as a fossil are going to be the harder parts. So often we find pieces of what looks like the stem. So here you go. This right here, this is a real big close-up of what a crinoid stem can look like. No, it's not a cucumber, if that's what you're thinking. So let's take a look at some real ones. This one can be pretty small. So here is in a rock, you can see the stem. I know this isn't very good. So again, I will show you guys some better pictures of these. But the way that I always remember crinoids is it looks like the bottom of a bolt or the bottom of a screw. It has little rings that go all the way around it. Let me show you the end of it. It's round, but it looks like the bottom of a bolt or the bottom of a screw. So that's how you can remember a crinoid. Now, we've gone through three of the fossils that we find around here. And next, we're gonna cover one. It's close to being my favorite. If you look at these guys right here, these kind of gray lumps. <laughs> um, this is a type, a true type of coral, but it has the name horn coral. And it's really kind of hard to understand why it gets the nickname or the name horn coral by looking at this picture. And it's because you can't see the whole animal. Part of it is buried in the mud. So let's take a look at what it is as a fossil. It really does look like an animal's horn. This is the fossil that I always tell people I need the most help with because it gets the most confusion. When somebody finds a fossil in Ohio and it looks like this, I often am told, I found a dinosaur tooth or I found a dinosaur claw. Okay, if you found it in southwestern Ohio in the rock naturally, it can't be a dinosaur fossil. Remember, our fossils, our rocks are much, much older than dinosaurs. So if you find something that looks like this, you've actually found a horn coral. That point was buried down in the mud and then it would filter water up here at the top. So it may not be as exciting as a dinosaur tooth or a dinosaur claw, but again, much, much older. So if you're finding this in Ohio, it has to be a horn coral. Okay, the first four fossils, the first four animals that we looked at were all things that pretty much stayed in one place at the ocean floor. They filtered water. The last three things we're going to look at were actually animals that moved around. They would go around the ocean to get their food. A couple of these will look very similar to animals that you might recognize today. So we have this critter right here. You guys all know what this is, it's a snail. So there are sea snails. Now you gotta think about what part of this animal is going to become a fossil. It's not gonna be this soft body, okay? It will be the shell. The shell is what we find preserved, just like in the example I gave you earlier. So this guy is called a gastropod. Gastro means stomach, pod means foot. So if you look at the picture, he slides on his stomach. It's kind of like his foot. So that's where he gets his name. It's kind of funny, but it's a good way to remember it. So gastropod fossils, we have an amazing example from right here in Georgetown. So I'm gonna show you guys, let's look at the top first. Okay, this gastropod fossil, do you see all the colors in this? And do you see how right there where the opening is, you can kind of see a little bit of flex, there's a little bit of crystals or maybe some quartz in there. And that's the gray rock inside this shell. This is one of the few examples I have where this is the actual shell 
from an animal that lived 400 million years ago. So it didn't totally dissolve. It's filled in with minerals, it's filled in with sand and sediment, but that is the actual shell on the outside. So I just love finding these things. And like I said, this came from right in Georgetown in Brown County, Ohio. Our next animal, again, will look similar, but you may have some questions about what we find on this animal. So if you take a look at this, definitely looks like what we know as squids. And this is an ancient type of squid, but our squids today only have one hard part to their body and that's their beak or their mouth. So on this, there actually was a shell. And if you see in the picture, it kind of has a cap on its head and then this whole back area was protected by a shell. That is what we find as a fossil. Now this is one that you really have to know what you're looking for because it doesn't look much like a squid when you find it. The way I remember this one, okay, so this is the bottom. If you look at it from that angle, it looks like a loaf of bread. And that's how I often remember this. It may not always have flat on the bottom, but if you look at the side, you see how it looks like it's got slices? To me, it reminds me of slices in a loaf of bread, but this is a cephalopod. This animal could grow very large. So remember, the larger it is, the more likely it is to break into pieces. So we often don't find huge pieces of cephalopod. We find smaller pieces and then they um, can be identified just by the small pieces. So always remember those lines, those slices like a loaf of bread, okay? Now last, the very last fossil that we have, it is probably what makes this part of the world most famous. And this is an animal that is extinct, okay? There are some distant cousins, you know, something that's kind of like it, but there's nothing like this anywhere left in the world. This animal disappeared over 200 million years ago. So let's look at his picture. Don't tell me that it looks like a shoe, okay? I have heard that before. <laughs> this animal has a hard shell, has small little legs, but if you look at the shell right in the middle, it has lots of lines. This animal could flex its shell. When it was threatened, it could actually bend its shell or curl its shell into a ball as a defense. So if you think about like a roly-poly bug or an armadillo, they have similar defenses, hard shell on the outside, but they can roll up to protect themselves. So this animal is called a trilobite. Trilobites, like I said, they no longer exist, but we can find them as fossils. And often we do find them rolled up. They preserve a little bit better when they're rolled up because it's a little bit harder to break. You can find them flat, but it's just, uh, most of the ones I have found have been rolled up like this. Tri means three, lobe, is like lobes, like the section of an animal. So if you look, this animal has three lobes or three sections to its body. Trilobite, the Isotelus trilobite in particular, is actually the state fossil of Ohio. In Brown County, sometimes you can find pieces of Isotelus, um, but more than likely you're gonna find some of these smaller types of trilobites you look this one's nice and rolled up but you can see the three lobes or the three sections that we mentioned you can see the eye spots on this one this was from what scientists can tell this was the first animal that had any type of eye spot any ability to truly see uh, light and dark and shadows so that is one trilobite I did want to show you a flat one so here is another one, and
and you can see this one has a little bit of rock still on it, but this guy's flat. But you can see his eyes again, and you can clearly see those three body sections on this guy. So, those are the seven basic types of fossils that we find here in Brown County. I will show you one more example of fossils. Sometimes we don't find nice, clean, neat fossils all by themselves. Sometimes you find just rocks that are smashed full of fossils. So I have an example of that. Here is a fossil or a rock that is full of different pieces of fossils. If you look at it, you can see that right here, that's a little piece of a trilobite. Right here is a bryozoan, so that moss animal. We have pieces of brachiopods, different, just lots of different types of fossils, all smashed and packed into one rock. So Ohio, Southwestern Ohio, and the corners of Indiana and Kentucky, we are just lucky to live in a place that has so many fossils. So I hope you enjoyed learning. I hope you get the opportunity to get out. Remember, just be safe if you're out looking for fossils. Um, sometimes you can go to Rocky Creeks in Brown County. Make sure that it's somebody you know that you have permission to be there. And always go with someone. Don't go on your own if you're going to be around water. But there are some parks in southwestern Ohio that will allow you to collect fossils, such as Caesar Creek Lake and Houston Woods and Trammell Fossil Park. So those are all places that you can also go if you don't have some place locally to go fossil collecting. So get out and explore. Thanks, everybody.